Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. Excuse me. I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here, practicing to take the GRE general test, the 10th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You must have it. There is no such thing as preparing for the GRE without this book. This is the one that has real exams. There are seven, seven real exams in this. This is an excellent source to prepare for the exam. Don't waste your time and your money uh, buying all the other products that are on the market. Uh, those are fake exams. There is, why the hell should you buy a fake exam and you can just as easily practice on the real thing? I am not at liberty to name any names here right now, obviously. I cannot tell you which one not to buy. I'm not at, I, I, I don't have the luxury of divulging that kind of uh, information. But anyway, uh, don't buy, uh, in my opinion, this, this is a real book. This is what you want to practice for. This, this is, as I say, I believe the expression is real McCoy. I hope I used it correctly. Anyway, the problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 123. The tag that I use is GRE. Dash 10e because this is the 10th edition. Page number 123 is where you're going to find it. QC stands for quantitative comparison. Quantitative comparison, where you are asked to compare the two quantities in the two columns. Let's take a look at it. See what it says. So we are, we are told that x plus y equals negative one, and we are asked to compare x versus y. Well, what should I do? Let's plug in numbers. Let's suppose x is 10 and the y is negative 11. That will give me negative 1. In which case, x is 10, y is negative 11. Column A, column B. We found one instance where quantity in column A is bigger, which, which tells me we're not done yet. We're not done yet. I'm not suggesting that the answer is A. All I'm telling you is that if you find one instance when the quantity in one column is bigger, then it rules out C. But there is no answer choice D, sorry. C says the two quantities are equal. Two quantities cannot be equal because you just showed me one instance where quantity in one column is bigger than the other. That rules out C. Also, we just found out that the quantity in column A is bigger, which also tells me that the B can be ruled out easily. Answer has to be either A or a D. We have raised your answer 50-50. Why did I cross out B? Because B, if you were to pick answer choice B, what you're claiming is that the quantity in column B is always bigger. That is the operative word, always. It has to be always. Answer choice C claims that the quantity in column, quantities in, in the two columns are always equal. But they cannot be both always equal because you, want, because you found one instance when it's not, when they're not. What else can we do now? Let's, 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 let's see. Now we have to think a little bit more to see if this is always true. This quantity in column A is bigger. Question is, is this something that has to be true all the time based on this relationship? Well, how about if I, how about if I were to do this? Make this negative 10 and make this positive 9. Negative 10 plus positive 9 is still negative 1. Now, all of a sudden, this is negative 10 and this is positive 9. Before the answer was A, now the answer is B. Let me put the before answer in the black marker so we can keep the two separate. There we go. Answer change. Answer change from A to B, which tells me that the correct answer is D. You cannot really tell. It depends on the quantities of X and Y. There is not enough information here. Let me look at the clock in the back, see if I have time to do the next question. Oh yes, plenty of time. We are only four minutes into it. Let's do the next one. Number four. Question number four. I'm going to put these tags individually for each separate question, even though more than one question appears in a the clip there, but each question will have its own tag. So if you're searching for a given question, just type in, for example, if you're, if you're searching for, I'm just going to pick something at random here. Let's say, let's say you're searching for, again, the quantitative comparison question. This is out of exam number four in this book. So the tag that you will use is GRE 
dash 10th edition dash page number 265 quantitative comparison question number 14 and if that question is what you're looking for question number 14 is actually on the next page question number 10 and if that is the question that you're looking for that's the that's the tag that you want to use and we'll pop right out okay anyway let's look at question number four twenty three times seven hundred eighty four over seven hundred eighty three versus twenty four times seven hundred and 83. Oh boy, I just made a boo boo. I just made a boo boo. I wasn't paying attention. A uh, boo boo, by the way, is a technical term for, for those of you who do not know. Uh, it's the term that, one, that is to be employed when one mucks things up. 23 times 784, 784 versus 24 times 783. How do we compare these two quantities? Don't, don't sit there and try to calculate everything. These are called quantitative comparison. They are not called, they are not called computation. These, are, these questions are not called quantitative computation. That is not the point here. They are called, they are called comparison. You are, you are to compare the two quantities, not compute the bloody thing. So what do we do here? Well, there is a simple trick that you do. You see, this is, don't use the small numbers. Take the large number there, and you, I'll tell you the reason in a second. Let's take the largest one, 784. Doesn't really matter, 784, 780, same thing. Divide both quantity by 784. If I divide both sides by the same number, I'm not changing, I'm not changing the relative, relative uh, position of the two things, because it's like a balance. If I add five kilos to this side or five kilos to this side, it will still be the same same weight of the two quantities that I want that I'm supposed to compare. Divide both quantity by 784. Now what I notice all of a sudden is that 784 over 784, that's just one. And here is 783 divided by 784, that's almost one. It's good enough to be one. So that cancels out. It's almost one. It's okay, it's almost one. You can leave it like that. That's it, we're done. The reason we can do such kind of this kind of approximation is because you always have to remember. I'm going to say it for the very first time right now, and I'm going to probably keep repeating it. You must always keep in mind that there are two things that you're not doing in the exam when you're taking the GRE. You're not performing an open heart surgery, and you're not sending a satellite in the sky. Nobody's life is dependent on it. Okay, so it's okay to do a little approximation. Otherwise, if you insist on doing precise thing every single time, it takes too long. That's it. You're so now I can compare very easily which quantity is bigger, 24 or 23? Obviously the answer is B. That's it, we are done, voila. That's it. The answer is B. Again, let me look at the clock. I hope, I hope you found this helpful. If you wish to buy solution manuals to all the problems in this book, every single problem in this book, there are seven exams there. Or if you wish to hire me for personal private tutoring, in either case, go to my website at www.preprepfor4gre.com and send me an email. I I am located in Connecticut, uh, but that does not prevent me from going anywhere in the world as long as you and I can come to an agreement. I do most of my work in Connecticut, in Manhattan, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, all over the place. Uh, I've been to as far as New Jersey and many other states, uh, Florida and so forth. So as long as uh, we can come to an agreement, uh, uh, I'll be more than happy to come and help you out. Okay? Send me an email. Thank you.